Welcome to Granddaddy Speaks. This is Andy Beverly and today we're going to be talking about Halloween and how it came to be and where it's famous. A long time ago when the man who became St. Patrick for whom we just celebrated uh, eight, ten days ago St. Patrick's Day and people went around in green shirts and things. St. Patrick came to Ireland. He had been there as a young man and he came back as a priest. And when he came back to Ireland he needed to get some people organized that were intelligent and educated to become the bishops who would train priests for the various towns so that they could spread religion over people who did not have any religion other than something like uh, that that frogs might be holy or that pigs might be holy or something or other. There was very primitive religions and so St. Patrick went to the smartest people in Ireland and guess who they were? Druids who had a kind of a religion of their own and that were <clears throat> the very most educated people in Ireland. They acted as advisors, as doctors. They really helped the Irish people go. And these Druids were Irish people, but they were unusually able and smart and tough Irish people. And guess what? He got the Druids all to be his bishops. But the Druids said, well, there's one thing we can't give up. We have this famous day where we get rid of the bad spirits and demons and the sins that people have committed during the year. And they, the, the, the St. Patrick kind of stood back and he said, well, I thought y'all were going to become Christians and we were going to talk about that kind of stuff. And they said, we will, but we have to save this day because otherwise we're going to lose the people of Ireland to some new bishops, some new druids excuse me, not bishops, druid. And guess what? The end of the month of October was when they all took, put out the fires in their houses in Ireland and they all put on masks and stuff and went way out in the countryside to a big field and the whole village would be there. Everybody in the whole village would be there and the Druids would say, now what I want you to do is to take off your masks and throw them into the fire and tell the flame what you've done that you're sorry you did this year and what you didn't do that you wish you had and tell the flame that you will try to be better from now on. Sounds a little bit familiar, doesn't it? That's what the preachers tell us now, don't they? To be good. So, what we now call Halloween became a part of the Constitution of Ireland and the people always practiced going out and putting on the masks and stuff but now they say it to the Lord God in heaven and so what happens is that the Druids marching out long ago with the people following them started something and the only country that I can find anywhere in the world that has Halloween as a part of the constitution of the nation is Ireland because St. Patrick let the Druids have the day he just turned it into one that fit into the Christian type of life that he was trying to teach to these people who were basically uh, kind of cannibals and almost everything else that you can think of. So when you think about it on Halloween, think about our millions and millions of people in America who migrated here from Ireland in the potato famine, who now are just as big a part of America as anybody could be, and they're the people who brought Halloween first to America. Thank you for coming and listening to me.